welcome. Welcome to First Community Church of the Nazarene, a fellowship of love where God's Spirit brings us together as a family. And it's worship time. I wonder if you are ready for worship. It is a privilege and it is a joy to join with you in worship today. Or you may say, how can we join together in worship? Well, you know, Jesus answered that question uh, when he spoke with the woman at the well. She thought that worship was relegated to a certain mountain, a certain place. But Jesus informed her uh, that God seeks those who would worship him in spirit and in truth. And that is not a matter of place or even time. Uh, it's a matter of being joined together in worship by the Holy Spirit. And so right where you are, uh, you can join with me and join with other believers in worship. I would say to you, come, now is the time to worship. Let us begin and worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. For the ones who dreamed of days to come. Los que con los días del For the ones who fought till day was Para done. Los que hasta el día. For the ones who bravely marched ahead. Para los que For the ones who showed up in my stead. Para los que en mi lugar. For the ones who pressed with trembling Para fear. Los que adelante, aunque llenos de temblor. Miedo. For the ones who battled for freedom so dear. Para los que lucharon por la libertad for the ones who were courageous, unyielding, and swift. Los que fueron valientes, los que no se rinden, los graciosamente ligeros. For the ones who gave the final gift. Para los que dieron el regalo final. They served us abroad and they served us at home. Nos sirvieron en tierras extranjeras y también en nuestro local. They served in great company and they served when alone. Servían en gran compañía y servían cuando estaban solos. Today we remember and we pause to reflect. Hoy recordamos y hacemos una pausa para reflexionar. Today we honor and bestow on them respect. Hoy los honramos y los otorgamos respeto. Like Jesus, they laid down their lives for their friends. Como Jesús dieron sus vidas, sus vidas por sus amigos. How noble the ones who endured to the end. Qué nobles los que aguantaron. Hasta el final. We, we give, give God, God thanks, thanks to our, our Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Gracias, Gracias a Dios a través de nuestro Señor Jesucristo. For para all the ones who made the ultimate sacrifice. El sacrificio supremo.
Gracious God and our Father, great is your name and greatly to be praised. In the morning, to be praised. In the noontime, to be praised. In the evening time, to be praised. When the sun goes down, we bless you now and extol your great name and thank you for the great privilege you've given to us to lift up holy hands and holy hearts unto you and to join with the angels around the throne of God, declaring that thou art worthy, thou art worthy, thou art worthy, O God, to receive all glory, honor, and power. Uh, we thank you for this blessed privilege, and we uh, join with believers around the world. Uh, one faith, one Lord, one baptism, one God and Father over us all. Thank you, God, for the grace that attended us as we went throughout the week and for keeping us, for helping us in the midst of this current season of great challenge, O oh God. Uh, we pray for those who continue to grieve uh, because uh, of losing loved ones. O oh God, we, 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 we weep with those who weep today and uh, ask that you will grant them the sustaining grace of God that will heal their heart and comfort their soul. Be a balm to them, O oh God, we pray. And uh, we pray that in the midst of that, they will experience the loving presence of God. We pray, O oh Heavenly Father, and thank you that even in the midst of these times, you're saving souls. You're saving souls. We lift up to you today uh, uh, Brother Morris Richards, who is in the hospital battling COVID virus, but who gave his life to the Lord Jesus Christ. We pray that you'll continue the healing process and bring him out with greater strength, O oh God, and that the strength will not merely uh, in his body, but the strength will be in his soul, that he will come back in the power of the Holy Spirit to serve you, O God, and to testify of the goodness of God to him in the land of the living. We think of so many on this uh, Memorial Day weekend, so many who are grieving because of lost loved ones. Lord, maybe looking at their picture with tears running down their cheeks. Uh, that mother, that wife, that, uh, uh, that child who miss their loved one. Oh God, would you just comfort them today and help them to know that you will be with them uh, and you will never, uh, ever forsake them. And so, Lord God Almighty, we lift up our hearts to you today to give you thanks for every blessing, blessing seen and unseen and pray that... Uh, in this worship service, O oh God, you will move our hearts so that worship will be pleasing to you. These things we pray in the name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. At First Community, we believe that giving is an act of worship. During this time, we have three methods available for you to participate in giving. For a simple and secure option, you can give online at the church's website and click on the Offering tab. If you choose to mail in your tithes and offering, please send your checks to First Community Church of the Nazarene. Our address can be found in the description box below. Or you may drop off your tithes and offering at the church. Please call the church office first at 914-347-2601. Updated office hours can be found on our website. Despite what is going on around us, we must continue to give back to the Lord what he has graciously blessed us with. We thank you for faithfully giving to the Lord's work. Enjoy the rest of today's service. Good morning, church family. Today we'll be reading from Acts chapter 4, verses 5 to 22. The next day, the rulers, the elders, and the teachers of the law met in Jerusalem. Annas, the high priest, was there. And so were Caiaphas, John, Alexander, and the others of the high priest's family. They had Peter and John brought before them and began to question them. By what power or what name did you do this? And then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers and elders of the people, 
If we're being called to account today for an act of kindness shown to a man who was lame and are being asked how he was healed, then know this, you and all the people of Israel, it is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you healed. Jesus says, the stone you build is rejected, which has become the cornerstone. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name in heaven given to mankind, which we must be saved. When they saw the courage of Peter and John and realized that they were unschooled, ordinary men, they were astonished and they took note that these men had been with Jesus. But since they could see the man who had been healed standing there with them, there was nothing they could say. So they ordered them to withdraw from the Sanhedrin, then conferred together. What are we going to do with these men? They asked. Everyone living in Jerusalem knows they had performed a notable sign, and we cannot deny it. But to stop this thing from spreading any further among the people, we must warn them to speak no longer to anyone in this name. Then they called them in again and commanded them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John replied, which is right in God's eyes, to listen to you or to him? You be the judges. As for us, we cannot help speaking about what we have seen and heard. After further threats, they let them go. They cannot decide how to punish them because all the people were praising God for what had happened. For the man who was miraculously healed was over 40 years old. This is the word of the Lord.
Brothers and sisters, on our prayer line last Tuesday morning, I heard a brother testify to the fact that it is so challenging to go into work every day knowing that there are patients and staff members dying from the COVID virus. Very challenging, he said. As many of us return to the workplace, as we are anticipating to do, it will be very challenging for us to go in and interact, for so much has changed since you were last in the building, many of you. Uh, we will be facing uh, some fears and anxieties, and it will take great courage to do our job and to do it in the same place that we have done it before, but under different circumstances. Where will this courage come from? Uh, the work environment has become a more threatening place, a, a, a more dangerous and risky place. But I'm here today to remind you that God has not called us to live a life of fear. Uh, God has called us to live a life of victory. And I want to remind you of the encouraging words that God gave to Joshua as he was about to go over into Canaan, which was hostile territory. Uh, and this is what he said to Joshua in Joshua chapter 1, verse 9. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Did you hear that? The Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Wherever you work. Wherever you go. Wherever you shop, wherever you go, wherever you travel, wherever you go, the Lord thy God will be with you wherever you go. This thing called courage, which we will need to normalize our existence. What is it like? Uh, how do we know when we have it? Uh, courage uh, has to do with bravery. Uh, courage has to do with valor. A, a boldness of spirit and a boldness of conduct. It, it, for the Christian, it is deeply rooted in our conviction and the promises of God. Uh, so, so important it is that uh, we will see in this sermon where uh, the conviction, the Christian conviction of Peter and John pushed them 
beyond that which would bring the fear upon them, fill them with courage so they could fulfill the will of God. Uh, so uh, the word for us today comes from the fourth chapter of the book of Acts where Peter and John were going to the temple to pray. And as they went along, seemingly doing what they have done so many times before, uh, a beggar was being transported to be laid at a certain gate called Gate Beautiful. And the beggar see, seen an opportunity uh, to, to get some, uh, some money, uh, called out to them. And Peter and John uh, were about to continue, but Peter was arrested by the Holy Spirit. He was uh, arrested by the Holy Spirit, so he turned towards the beggar turned towards him, and as he turned towards him, he said, look at us, in, in that firm, commanding voice, look at us. Uh, the, the beggar uh, may have had his head down with his, his, his little bowl up like that, hoping to hear a jingle fall in it and to bring it back down, uh, and, but Peter wanted him to look him in the eye, and so Peter said, look at us. At which time, something very important began to happen in Peter as well as in John. And we will get to understand uh, what is taking place at this point uh, because it, it, it happened so suddenly, and it is so spiritually poignant. What was taking place? Well, first of all, here are three facts. First of all, from the story we learned that Peter did not have any money. Now, why would you tell a begging person to look at you, he's asking for money, he's expecting some money, and you don't have any money. Ah. Secondly, Peter knew that to engage the beggar with this kind of spiritual authority would anger the leaders of the temple. And, and so he was taking a risk. Uh, uh, this was dangerous stuff that he was doing. Uh, he, Peter knew how it angered them to the point where they crucified the Lord of glory. And here he was acting like Jesus would. Look at us. And thirdly, Peter knew the prevailing belief among the populace, that this man's parents must have done something very sinful for him to be in this condition. That was the thought because he was disabled from the moment of his birth. So here are these uh, prevailing factors that would want to uh, motivate Peter to just pass the man and go on into the temple and do his praying and not re be responsive. Yet Peter stopped, arrested by the Holy Spirit, turned towards the man and said, look at us. we may ask, why create this scene? Why upset the authorities? Instead, I would call him penniless Peter. Risk embarrassment, risk retribution, risk all manner of calamity in order 
to give to this man what he possessed. Didn't have money. But what is it that he possessed? Here in the words of Peter, we find out exactly what was going on in his mind. Peter looked straight at him, as did John. Then Peter said, look at us. So the man gave them his attention, expecting to get something for them. Then Peter said, silver or gold I do not have, but what I have I give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Walk. Taking him by the right hand, he helped him up. And instantly, the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. Then he went with them into the temple courts, walking and jumping and praising God. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the same man who used to sit bedding at the temple gate called Beautiful. What was going on in Peter? Peter knew about the power of the name of Jesus. Silver and gold he did not have, but he had a prayer. And he had a savior. And he had courage to introduce his prayer and his savior into that situation as he expressed the courage to be kind. The courage to be kind. As I said, it took courage for Peter to push past his prejudice. It took courage for Peter to push past his financial poverty and to give the only thing he had a prayer in the name of Jesus. A prayer of faith. A prayer of hope. A prayer of kindness. And the man was blessed. Oh, not with money, but something far greater than money. With the now capability of earning money for his own self. What a blessing. What a blessing. What a blessing indeed. Silver and gold have I none. But such as I have, give I unto you in the name of Jesus. Be blessed. I wonder if there's some times you think you can be a blessing because you don't have any money. Uh, or, or you don't have anything of worth that you think would be a blessing to someone. Well, can you take a leaf out of Peter's book today? And remember that you always have the name of Jesus. If you're a believer, you always have the power resident in the name of Jesus. As a believer, you always can pray. You can always trust. You can always hope. You can always be kind in the name of Jesus. Amen? I hope you find an amen in your heart today. Now, beloved, we want to ask the question about this courage resident in Peter. For we know something about his history. We know that this was milky toast Peter who denied Jesus three times. In his hour of greatest need, Peter denied the Lord. He, 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 he didn't have any courage to stand up and say, I know this Jesus. This is the Peter. So something must have happened to him. Something must have happened to him. Something radical must have happened to him. 
In Acts chapter 4, verse 13, we read these words. When they saw the courage of Peter and John, they who? Uh, the high priest, Annas the high priest, and, and the leaders of the temple, the ones who had handcuffed them and jailed them for a night and then bring them back out of jail and put them in the judgment hall and, and, and had a trial? Yes, they, when they, saw the courage of Peter and John and realized that they were unschooled, ordinary men. Uh, they were astonished and they took note that these men had been with Jesus. Uh, there's a clue. There's a clue right there. Uh, unschooled, an ordinary man with extraordinary faith and courage and authority to proclaim healing in the name of Jesus, they received their courage because of what Jesus had taught them. And there are three convictions that they embrace uh, that's resident in the passage. First of all, uh, their conviction that there was power in the name of Jesus, uh, chapter 4, verse 10. Uh, they remember Jesus saying in John 14, 14, I will do whatever you ask in my name uh, that the Father may be glorified. Uh, a, a second conviction that, that welled up in their spirit is a conviction that there is salvation in the name of Jesus. Uh, they remember Jesus saying in John chapter 14, verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Yes, yes, there is salvation in no other name but the name of Jesus. And thirdly, uh, the, the thing that steals their conviction is the conviction that their courage is a conviction that obedience brings victory in Jesus. In John chapter 14, verse 23, uh, we read, Anyone who loves me will obey my teaching, and my Father will love them. Anyone who loves me will obey my teachings. Obedience. Obedience. That's why they said, in chapter 4, verse 19 of, the, of this passage in Acts, chapter 4, verse 19, uh, uh, when they tried them and they couldn't find anything to uh, convict them on and were about to ready to let them go, they threatened them and said, do not ever speak in this name again. And this is what the, Peter responded. But Peter responded, judge for yourselves whether it is right in God's sight to obey you rather than God. Judge for yourself. We have to obey God rather than man. Yes, beloved. It will take courage, extraordinary courage, for you to live a life of victory without fear. A life in which you can be a blessing to someone. A life in which you can be kind, uh, even in the face of anxiety and fear. How will you live that life? Because of your conviction uh, that in the name of Jesus there's power. In the name of Jesus there's victory. In the name of Jesus there's salvation. Uh, one of our sisters testified this week how she was in the line at Home Depot and a man came up to her seeking to maybe make a few dollars uh, and ask if he can help her. Immediately she pulled back because of uh, uh, social distancing and uh, uh, said, no, I don't think so. And then the man uh, uh, left. Uh, in the moment, the Holy Spirit arrested her and gave her the courage to be kind. And so she left her car and went looking for him and said, Sir, sir, I, I really didn't need the help, but here are a couple of dollars that I could spare. She pushed past her anxiety and she had the courage to be kind. You too will face circumstances similar to that. 
Will self-preservation keep you from being courageous and kind? I hope not. For in this day and age, there will be so many needs and so many opportunities. Maybe you can say with the psalmist, Lord, I'll go where you want me to go, over mountain or plain or sea. I'll say what you want me to say, dear Lord. I'll be what you want me to be. Amen. At First Community, we believe that giving is an act of worship. During this time, we have three methods available for you to participate in giving. For a simple and secure option, you can give online at the church's website and click on the Giving tab. If you choose to mail in your tithes and offering, please send your checks to First Community Church of the Nazarene. Our address can be found in the description box below. Or you may drop off your tithes and offering at the church. Please call the church office first at 914-347-2601. Updated office hours can be found on our website. We thank you for faithfully giving to the Lord's work. We also encourage you to like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel for notifications on upcoming services, and share this forum of worship with your family and friends. Brothers and sisters, I hope that was a blessing to you, that the word today, that rich word concerning courage to be kind, uh, rooted in a deep conviction, uh, was inspiring so that you can know that indeed that God will be with you wherever you go uh, to help you to be full of courage. Uh, you know, as I said before, uh, there will be many opportunities for, uh, for us to be kind and courageous uh, as we move forward in this season. A and so I want to encourage you uh, to listen for the voice of the Holy Spirit because there will be many instances in which he will arrest you for service, arrest you for service. And so be ready, be ready uh, to say yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your way. When the Spirit speaks to me, with my whole heart I'll agree, and my answer will be yes, Lord, yes. Now let us pray. Gracious God and our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the grace of God that brought us to service today. We thank you for the word of encouragement uh, that, Lord, you will be with us wherever we go and you will give us the courage to be kind. You will steal us with deep conviction so we may boldly uh, uh, share the love of God uh, with those uh, we meet along the way, like Peter and John did. So grant that grace, grant that grace that this week, O oh God, maybe today, Lord, we will hear you speak to us and we'll respond and somebody will be blessed and our Heavenly Father will be glorified. We give you thanks in anticipation of what you will do. In Jesus' name, amen.